Hey, my Taurus babies, this is EJ from Tarot Tarot. I hope everybody had a good Thursday. So we did your weekend update. Of course, my neighbors will start talking until I start doing this. That just pisses me off. Anyway, did your weekend update last night. So this is going to be Taurus and Aquarius sitting in the tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G for the rest of the month of August through just about the end of September. Keep the shuffled up and cut up. So this is gonna be an enhanced reading. We're using two decks. We're using a Simply Deep deck by, um, what's her name, Sonia Shakay? And John Holland's Psychic Oracle deck. And I got a new deck on sale, thank you very much. The Wisdom of the Hidden Realms, that's this one. Um, and I'm going to use that for the oracles at the end. So, housekeeping. Thank you to everybody that has liked, shared, and subscribed. I appreciate you. Y'all know what I say when I wake up in the morning. I am just totally humbled by people's comments and number of subscribers, whatever. So thank you very much. I appreciate it for the month of August through um, August 31st. Subscribers to my channel can get a $5 reading. Um, some of the information is below, but the bigger thing is just email me at tarotatero at gmail.com and I will get back to you and let you know what to do. So, Taurus and Aquarius sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. We'll do three for recent past, three for current, three for future energy. We'll pull two for overall, and I'll keep pulling oracle cards till they stop. There you go. So from underneath the bottom of the deck, Taurus, your overall energy with your Aquarius. Prosperity begins. The bottom end of that is its wishing. So for your recent past, the waiting game spiritual strength, harmony, current energy, fulfillment of wishes, material and spiritual prosperity, temptation, future energy, discontent and boredom, authority, and fertility. All right, those down there. So from the regular deck, <clears throat> from underneath the bottom of the deck, the overall energy with prosperity begins. It's the two of wands. The intuition is pulling the six of swords. You reach the past. The waiting game is pulling the king of swords. Spiritual strength is pulling the nine of coin. Harmony is pulling the two of cups. Fulfillment of wishes and the current energy is pulling the ten of cups. Material and spiritual changes, your challenge, and your centerpiece card is pulling the moon. Temptation is pulling the fool. Discontent and boredom, pulling the discontent and boredom card. The four of cups, authority is pulling the eight of wands, and the fertility is pulling the five of swords. Okay, Taurus, let's see what you got going on here with this Aquarius. This reading is not as bad as it looks. Let me just say that off the rip. Um, I think we are just about a month from the last Taurus Aquarius reading we did. I think the last one was July 25th or 28th, somewhere in there. So we're right, we're right in range. So it might be overlapping by a few days. Anyway, Taurus, your overall energy with your Aquarius, that front end of your energy, prosperity begins in the Two of Wands. You may have well been one of these couples everybody's been talking about getting back together been distance separation pushing pulling in and out and up and down and back and forth this may be this the very energy that everybody's been talking about Taurus and Aquarius so this is exactly what I see actually coming together so with the prosperity begins in the two of wands you are actually going back to the beginning of a situation with your Aquarius and because you're doing that, you're actually opening the door for some creative things to happen. 
um, which ultimately could lead to some financial whatever. This is kind of your overall energy in terms of what you're throwing out there. You're glad to be back in a situation where you're manifesting this energy. And because of it, you just are more creative. That's the best way I know how to put that. Um, even though it's talking about prosperity, prosperity comes from somewhere. And <clears throat> nine times out of ten, it is your creativity that makes you prosperous and not just from a financial sense. The bottom end of your overall energy, the intuition with the six of wands, the six of swords, I'm sorry, moving out of that choppy into the calmer. You're doing this because you've been following your intuition. Congratulations, Taurus. You've been following your intuition. And so this is the bottom end of your overall energy. This is kind of what's grounding you. you overall, really, you're trying to get out of the choppy into the calmer. That is the swords card. Uh, it's definitely telling me you and your partner have been through some shit. And y'all are trying to come through. Continue to follow your intuition towards whatever your intuition is telling you. And I know a lot of you are like, I don't know if I like what my intuition is saying. Yeah, I hear you. Um, for a lot of you, this has got some karmic implications to it. <coughs> Excuse me. This may be your second, third, maybe even your fourth go around with this person. A little soulmate energy here. Um, with your recent past with the waiting game, the king of swords. You've been trying to deal with the business end of this relationship with your Aquarius. You've been trying to not be as emotional towards you. Yeah, I said emotional. You, you, because the Aquarius is just not emotional at all. They they have it, but they don't show it, and especially don't show it the way that we show it. Um, so a lot of you are coming out of a situation where you were really waiting, waiting on your Aquarius to come around. In the meantime, both of you, it feels like, have been trying to take care of loose ends for some of you it may have been internal things you needed to, to take care of just values beliefs whatever for others of you and this is reversal energy so it can be you or your Aquarius um, just trying to deal with business things clear up shit that's been hanging in the air in the meantime that has really put a lot of you in a waiting in just like in a holding pattern because you couldn't get together because it was so much other bullshit either one of you were trying to deal with. It almost made it impossible for you to have any kind of relationship. <clears throat> Moving further into your recent energy with the nine of coins on top of the spiritual strength. A lot of you, and this coin is you, Taurus. Ooh, don't get that shit twisted. That is you. While you've been trying to work on yourself, work on what you can do better in the relationship, Ultimately, you've been working on your spiritual strength. And that's kind of what has brought you through to this point. Even though this is recent past energy, I think for some of you recently, you realized how strong you were spiritually um, just to have the faith to go through whatever it is that you've gone through and still kind of halfway be standing there. Somewhere in the recent past, and this ain't, we ain't talking about last year. We're talking about within the last two, three weeks. It has clicked in your head and your other's head that y'all are actually it. Now, I am not how that's resonating with everybody, but some of you are realizing this really is soulmate energy that you're fucking around with with this person. Um, because you keep, you, you haven't been able, a lot of you have not been able to separate yourself from the situation. And it has not been easy. Um, Taurus, Aquarius, either one of y'all been doing some shit. Let me just throw that out there. And in part because neither one of you were really trying to commit. And I know Taurus is going, well, I was trying to commit. Yeah, you weren't trying to commit, commit. You were just trying to commit. I think now that both of you have been able to see some things a little differently. You're coming out of your recent past individually harmonious. Okay, work, work with me. You're in harmony with yourself, which in turn means that you will be in harmony with each other. Hello, hello, hello. And there it is. And you got your little flower down there that all your love is watering. Yeah, that's what's kind of giving me the indication, strong energy coming back. That for a lot of you, this is karmic shit. You might not want to deal with it. You might not want to admit it. But yeah, this might be a twin flame, a soul flame, a soul mate, whatever y'all are calling it. This might be that person. And that there has been so much struggle in this relationship. And y'all are still 
looking at each other and ain't ready to cut no throats it was giving me more of an indication of what it is than anything. Um, in your current energy, y'all are right here. If you didn't know it, let me tell you, you are right here. Happy family, happy family, spiritual union, happy family, happy family, and happy family. And the fulfillment of wishes for a lot of you, you're kind of looking now and going, well, is this really what I was wishing for? And that's the thing. That's the thing with wishing. You're wishing and you're thinking things are one way, and they really are another way. And I don't mean that in a bad sense. For some of you, you were just not going to realize how big this relationship is until you get a little further down the road and the kind of implications it has on your day-to-day -day living. That's what, you, that's what you're not realizing right now. Um, from another aspect, a lot of you don't realize what this person has brought to you in terms of understanding how you deal with emotions. Taurus, I know y'all like, I'm not emotional. I like to run through the china shop. That does not mean you're not emotional. Not at all. Uh, we are not as intellectual as we are as creatures when it comes to being able to kind of put the emotional distance between ourselves and whatever situation. That is not how we play the game. Throw that red flag out there. Watch how fast emotions and some other shit get kicked up with the Taurus. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We'll see red. It's just one of them things. So Aquarians and even the other two air signs, Gemini and Libra, they're a little more intellectual, a little more savvy with they get back. We just like we just run through the China shop. Fuck it. We don't give a damn. We are in our shit, emotional cups, whatever you want to call them. We are going for whatever it is that's pissed us off. Everybody doesn't operate the same towards, and that I think is what you are currently coming to realize, even though for a lot of you this is a big fulfillment of a big wish to be with this person, to even consider any kind of lifetime with this person, but <coughs> you're still kind of looking and going, well, wait a minute. To that I will say that those of you that are kind of looking at it and going, this is what I manifested, just sit tight. Just sit tight. There's a lot of things that are still up in the air yet. There's a lot of things that are not written in stone. And, and for all good reasons and purposes, everybody has free will. So you can walk away from this shit tomorrow if you feel like it. But for those of you that are in this and, and really looking at what you've manifested, some of y'all are going, oh, I didn't know about that. Which brings us here to material and spiritual prosperity with the moon card. And the moon and the fool are the only major energy on the board. So saying that where this relationship is headed is kind of going to be where it's headed for the time being. Because there's not a lot of major push-pull activity on here. This is flowing from one thing to another. You're going from one level to another. The creating a higher standard from your recent past to actually manifesting from the nine of coins to the ten of cups. What the hell? Work it out. Your overall, not your overall, your centerpiece. There's going to be some things to come out. And I know you've probably heard in some other readings and probably heard in some of my other readings. There are things you don't know, Taurus. There are things about your Aquarius you don't know. There's shit that's been going on and you've been sitting there howling at the moon trying to figure out why the hell, what the hell. And it didn't really have anything to do with you. But it had a lot to do with the fact that your Aquarius likes you. Work with me here. They don't want you to think that anything was fundamentally wrong with their life. They owe people money or they hadn't finished school or whatever that thing is that they've been doing. And a lot of you, <clears throat> as it is for your challenge, is to hear the truth about it without it flicking off into a whole lot of other crap. To hear the truth and understand what the other person is going through, that is sitting on a material and spiritual prosperity, this is where you become prosperous, both financially and spiritually. I know you're like, how does that happen? Work through the energy. Work through the energy. Because you hear something maybe that you don't like, or maybe somebody withheld some information and it didn't have anything to do with cheating or ex-relationship, none of that. Just strictly 
didn't handle their business at some point and now they're trying to hurry up and get it together because they met you, Taurus. That's the thing you need to hear. And the energy can be vice versa. Taurus, you can be cleaning up your shit because you met the Aquarius. Either way. But however that's resonating, the information that you hear or the things that you uncover should not make you haul tail and run away. It just should. If you can hang on to it, this is your challenge. You will be prosperous. And I'm not just talking about a paycheck. There's more than one way to be prosperous. But um, you will begin to see avenues of your life open up. And I know for some of you that's, that's kind of difficult. Some of you, let me clear this up. Some of you are not going to go for this shit. Some of y'all are going to postpone a lot of this until a later date because you still hurt things that happened in the recent past, things that happened before any anything else happened. A lot of you are butt hurt, and y'all are like, no, I'm not trying to hear no offer. I don't want to hear shit about a happy family. I don't want to hear shit about a fulfillment of my wish, your wish, anybody else's wish. Leave me alone. And that's okay towards if that's where you are with this situation right now. If you don't feel like you can move forward in any kind of positive energy, you're better to just leave it alone. And that's the real truth. Um, and looking at the fool card sitting on top of the temptation, if you're not ready for this, but you got the temptation, I'm going to just throw this shit up against the wall. I know it's going to stick. Which one me tell you? You have the temptation to just push through this even though you're not feeling it 100%. Don't take the risk. Don't take the risk. You should, but if you're not feeling it, you definitely should not. Just if somebody is sitting on YouTube telling you, oh, yes, you should do. Taurus says you should just jump. If you're not feeling it, I'm talking to the, the other group of y'all now that with Aquarius is kind of looking at the wall like, are you serious? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Take your time, Taurus. If you need an extra month or two to process, that's this year's word. The situation, some more process how you feel, process where you are before you get into any deeper kind of commitment. Either way, you still got this going on. You're still moving out of the choppy and into the calm. And this keeps popping up for tourists. So I know a lot of you are, feel, are probably even beginning to feel like things are beginning to settle down a bit. A lot of that has to do with Uranus going into retro motion. Um, but right here, if you... If you're not feeling it, if y'all ain't feeling it, don't do it. If you are, because you, you, the question is coming. For those of you that thought it wasn't all of this little shit right here, <laughs> that's no joke. The question is going to come. Are we doing this? Are we going to go a step further? It may not, I'm sorry, it may not come out the way you want it to. It may come out as a business proposition or some other shit. But at the end of the day, it's here, Taurus. But boom, boom. Now, like I said, you don't have to. You can walk away and come back later and walk away and not ever come back uh, and just change your whole trajectory and start doing something else. You, you can do that. But whatever you do, don't do it if your heart's not in it. If you're still too hurt, too wounded, to whatever the word is. You might be tempted just to go okay well i'll just heal on the run no if you're not fully healed if this person has done something to you fuck it if you got some old shit from another relationship you really haven't healed from don't be tempted to take that kind of risk and fuck up your shit now some of you may decide you know i'm not gonna do no more healing i'm tired of sitting here by myself or whatever what i will say to you that are gonna go ahead and do this anyway half healed I hear you. Take your time. Do not get into trigger situations because somebody says something. Your knee-jerk reaction is to do X, Y, and Z. Take your time. Once again, this is a process. It's about the process. It's about knowing how your mind works, what's good for you, what triggers you, what doesn't trigger you, all of that. When you get into your future energy that you got the discontent and boredom card sitting on top of the discontent and boredom card, it's funny to me. 
But this is really asking you, what are you doing? Y'all done got together. Now, what are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Those of you that are younger, are you planning on a family? Are you saving your money? Are you trying to buy a house? Or are y'all just sitting there looking out the window like, la, la, la? Seriously, what are you doing? Because this is not going to be one of those relationships where you can just kind of rely and rest on your loyal. Loyals. Loyals. <laughs> Laurels. I'm sorry. This is not one going to be one of those. You have to work, Taurus. You have to get up and do some work. Not none of that sitting in the yard, just kind of laying around doing the bullish thing. No, you have to get up and do some work. And that's a good thing. And in, in part with Uranus's energy in Taurus right now, th that's what's supposed to happen. We're supposed to be in relationships right now that are forcing us to look beyond what we're used to in a relationship. If you at some point in the future energy are feeling like the grass might be greener on the other side, that's that one. Or that you're simply just discontent, just discontented and bored. Think again. What are you doing? You wanted to manifest. On top of this card is the fulfillment of wishes. Okay. We're done. We're done. Now what are you doing? What are you doing? You got to have something taking you to the next level. You cannot just get comfortable and complacent immediately. And then fall back into another rut. The whole point of going through any of this is to get you in a place where you're not consistently getting complacent and falling into a rut. I know it sounds crazy, but Uranus is in our sign for another six and a half years, so buckle up. It's not going to be nothing about sitting around. If you want to keep this relationship fresh towards I'm talking to you, you're going to have to get out of your little zone and come up with something different. With the Eight of Wands on top of the authority, future, a lot of fast communications, legal entities, some of you may be getting married, maybe getting married at a distance, maybe going to the Bahamas, to Jamaica to get married, it's a lot of fast communication with those authorities. I'm just saying, trying to get stuff organized, you might be getting married on a cruise, or you might be just together, bringing your families together and doing something big. But this is the planning stage of that. This is your future energy. With the Five of Swords on top of uh, the Fertility card, this is really about how you think about your Aquarius towards the constantly of the reverse. Are you constantly with the negative shit? Oh, he doesn't love me. Oh, she doesn't like me. Uh -huh. Maybe it's time to take a step back and look, think about your thought processes since we're in a process year. Maybe it's time to take a step back. How are you thinking about your lover? Are you only thinking good shit when they're in your face doing some shit? Or are you thinking good, positive thoughts about your relationship and your lover all the time? Because what you're thinking about is what you're going to get. Yeah, I said it. That's the law of attraction. What you think about is what you're going to get. So you all up in your head. This is the air card, by the way. You all up in your head on some bullshit. When you get bullshit, don't be surprised. So this is really about you in the creative process, not just about birthing a baby. But you're at the beginning of a relationship. How are you handling that relationship with your thoughts? Just throw that out there. A lot of times you can kill something good by constantly drudging up things that are negative. And I wouldn't say it if I didn't know it was true, but I'm one of them people that gets in, in one of them little funky phases and the, the world's going in and everything's just awful and oh my God. And that's negative thinking, really. And you do enough of it, you can damn well fuck up a lot of shit. So if you don't want to go through some of the things that you've been through recently, Taurus, it is imperative that you keep a better mindset. Everything is not doom and gloom just because somebody doesn't call you and they say they're going to call you on me and you're doing nothing. And, and maybe it's just time to take a step back from overanalyzing the situation and enjoy the situation for what it is. Maybe it's time for that, Taurus. Since this is what you manifested, the Ten of Cups and the Fulfillment of Wishes, since this is what you manifested, maybe it's just time to enjoy it for what it is and quit looking in every corner with your little white gloves on for 
the other shoe to fall. Now, this is reversal energy. It could be the Aquarius is doing that. However, whoever it is, let it go. Enjoy the relationship. Enjoy the ride for a few minutes. Get to that point on the ride where you don't know which way the ride is going, if you're going to go straight down or if you're going to go down with a curve. Just enjoy the ride. Take a break, both of you. Those of you cross-listening, Aquarius is listening to this, take a break and enjoy each other. Enjoy your time together and think about things you can do so you're not sitting there looking at each other in six months going, I don't like you no more. You're boring. Yeah, you know. Do something together that's creative, something that you both like. Do something neither one of you know how to do and see if you like it. Go learn how to cook French food. What up? Let's see what the world has got to say today for my Taurus and Aquarius babies. Which y'all don't know is I'm sitting here coloring my hair purple. <laughs> so I've got my hair wrapped up with a plastic bag. No, I'm not getting on camera. Y'all ain't gonna see me, no. But I'm trying to get my purple right, what you want me to say. All right, Taurus and Aquarius. So this is a new deck. This is the wisdom of the hidden realms. So we have the desert prince, survival, and false promises. So these cards have an ally side and a challenger side. So the ally side of this card would be survival. The challenger would be false promises. The hawk prince. Spirit communication, paying attention. The sun dancers. Joyful activity. Celebration of life and abundance. And one more. The rainbow prince. Yay! Compensation. Perseverance. Let me talk about the rainbow prince first perseverance. A lot of you are for you this relationship is the manifestation of you being persistent and having persevered through a whole bunch of bullshit. And if you don't know anything else then for whoever this is resonating with if you've come this far, you've done something and maybe it's a good time to just sit down and turn around and look at what you've manifested because it was no small feat and you hung on anyway. I'm just saying. And this could be Aquarius or Taurus. But either way, both of you probably need to just stop and look at what you create. It's a good thing if y'all could just get, <laughs> get past whatever just recently went on and just move forward. Don't dwell too much on the past. But this, this is, to me, it's a good sign that you both know how to persevere. And so if you made it through all this bullshit, when shit is going good, it should be no problem. With the Sundance's card, the thing that resonates back is a celebration of life. And that's what this is. When you can get a relationship together after it's been through some bullshit, that is truly a celebration of life. Don't take this shit lightly. And like I said, take a moment. Take a minute. Get the hell out your head, both of you. And just enjoy the relationship. Just sit around for a few days and just enjoy each other's company. Especially those of you who have come through some really nasty arguments and nasty fights. Just take a minute and be grateful in that moment for still hanging on to the love that you wanted. The Hawk Prince. Pay attention. Do what I said before, Taurus. Pay attention to what's going on with you what's triggering you? If, you if for those of you that are thinking about stepping back before you go any further with this relationship pay attention what, what is it that that's got you feeling some kind of way is it from this relationship and things that have gone on is it from another relationship but start paying attention to the detail when you get angry when you get irritable when you get frustrated you're dealing with your aquarius does it sound familiar is this shit you've heard before and for those of you that aren't going to go straight away into this situation, maybe that's something to think about and understand where you need to heal on the inside. So definitely paying attention to the details, paying attention to the things that 
are making you go or not go as far as this relationship is concerned. Even though, even those of you that are staying in the relationship with the renewal or the comeback, pay attention to how you feel. And definitely go slow through this energy. Don't feel like you got to rush through it. If you're committed, you're committed. So there's no sense of trying to rush just to get to the next day. Take your time. The Desert Prince with the survival of the false promises. This is definitely about the false promises. But it's also a little bit about the survival. Again, perseverance, you guys have survived. You've survived all this shit and you're still together. Even those of you that are thinking of walk away, walking away, you have survived to this point. Something to think about. But the fake promises is more of a reminder of what's going on and what has gone on to make sure that not only is your Aquarius on the up, but that you're on the up too, Taurus. And you're not just throwing shit out here because you're trying to get back in the relationship. Think about what you're saying. Are you really going to hold true to what you're saying? And for some of you, it may be a thing where you, you, you decide you're going to slow the whole thing down. And that wouldn't be a bad thing if you, some of you, it feels like are still smarting from incidents and situations that have gone on the last six months, year, year and a half. I, I'm not, I can't go back past two years, really. So this is not for long, long-term relationships. But this is for those of you that have been trying to hook up. And for whatever reason, it's been a bunch of bullshit. And people not talking to you. And you not talking to them. And you don't know. And they don't know. And you're mad one minute. And you're all in love the next. That, that karmic soulmate shit. Because it is such, and who are you? those of you I'm talking to, you know who I'm talking to. Make sure, don't, don't just jump into this because you think it's a soulmate relationship. Don't just jump back into this because you think it's got karmic shit in it. Get back in it because you want to be true to this person and you want to do something with the relationship. You shouldn't get to a point where you're talking about discontent and boredom if you're committed to the relationship. I'm just saying. I'm going to throw that out there. So if you get into a point somewhere in your future energy where you think you might be discontented, think about false promises. I'm throwing it up there. I know y'all don't want to hear this. But think about the false promises. and Why aren't you feeling like you can be more creative in your relationship? This is future energy, but it's something to think about. So as you roll through this and the happy, happy reunion and the happy family and all of that, make sure you're doing this and you're doing it for the good reasons and not the bad reasons and not to get back to somebody and just to say you've got somebody in your life. Think about it all the way around, especially if you've been through a lot. I think most of you are going to go ahead and give the relationship the go ahead. I think some, a few others of you are going, to, are going to put the brakes on and you're going to stop and take some time to think about what it is that you want to do with this relationship, if you want to go forward or, or not. I'm going to leave it there, Taurus and Aquarius. I love you. I hope you guys have a good weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.